following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, we go into the breach, dear friends, and we finally got some actions, broke out of a, a tightening trading range. We're down 28 points on the S&P cash. What we don't have is a plethora, a cornucopia of volume. It is better than it's been but it, uh, it was not as good as it was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, 2.37 billion shares, so we're up about uh, what, uh, 270 million shares over yesterday, which uh, was a snores fest to begin with. Um, but uh, the market's having a little bit of a identity problem. And, of course, uh, Mario Draghi started that this morning. Uh, he lied, and the indexes died uh, the market's been, as they like to say, orderly on the way down today. Uh, I think it kind of had uh, a time there where maybe it, um, you know, maybe down 10, 15 points it could have held. Uh, then the news uh, that uh, the events of yesterday were a terrorist action uh, are now leaking out, and it's uh, getting harder and harder for uh, politicians to blame it on a YouTube video or any of the other lies that they've peddled uh, over the last few years. This one, uh, pretty tough. Uh, nobody's swallowing the swill that they threw out last night. And as that reality comes uh, to our doorstep again, uh, we continue to uh, think about it. But uh, I, I felt it was very interesting last night as I was uh, watching news uh, just before I went to bed, trying to avoid it, actually, and uh, walked out of the room, and it was on. By the time I could get to the channel changer to actually change it, here it is right here, the actual channel changer, uh, someone had already said, uh, yeah, I already talked to somebody. They knew all about it. They knew exactly who these people were and uh, all about it. And then, of course, the uh, commentator said, uh, well, you can't jump to those kind of decisions or, or those kind of things. And I thought, yeah, this guy wasn't the kind of guy to just uh, mouth off uh, that it was a terrorist action. He talked to somebody that truly knew uh, the people that were involved and the uh, things that went on. Uh, just kind of a, the whole issue is uh, why then, why not a week from then, what they were really planning. Did something set these people off today where they just went a little early? But uh Pretty, you know, if you haven't heard, it's uh, basically the story that everybody's worried about before, and that is a uh, Pakistani woman was uh, slowly moved here to the United States, and uh, she was radicalized in Pakistan. And uh, a, a U.S. born citizen who uh, married her and, uh, by all accounts, was radicalized over the last few years um, as he was married to her. Anyway, uh, it is uh, just interesting. It's probably no different than the stock market. Everybody's got uh, a spin put on everything, but uh, we got kind of a double whammy. I would have loved to see and kind of a, I don't take this the wrong way, but there's no alternate reality where we can take Mario Draghi out of what is happening and then the terrorist action. Um, ideally, you would have had one and then had the other and see how the market reacted to them individually. Uh, but we will not get that luxury. We're going to have to figure out what part of this is a fear trade, what part of it is a reality trade on the long-term prospects for the market. If you're short-term trading, that's fine. Um, the rare event is something uh, if you uh, get a big enough swing, you can make money on. Uh, a 27-point swing, I think, if uh, somebody like Walmart came out with another warning and we were down 27 points today on the S&P cash, probably wouldn't say anything, uh, especially after the dollar move, uh, which has been uh, pretty uh, significant. Of course, we're uh, down about $2 off that high. Uh, and again, um, 
especially in Europe and England, uh, there are a lot of hedge funds uh, that were long the dollar, uh, short the euro, and uh, pretty much uh, Mr. Draghi lying about what he was going to do um, was uh, well, all they could take. And uh, we'll get more into that maybe throughout the show. But uh, I would have loved to seen uh, these events at least uh, moved a day away so I could more understand it. The one thing we will not be able to do is say definitively that uh, this 27-point move that we have right now is can be delved up to 60% one thing and 40% another. We also, if neither one happened, couldn't have known uh, that we still would have had 27 points down. So there are a lot of things that we think we know that we do not know, and uh, there's no way to actually prove them. Uh, but uh, yeah, 2.4 billion shares. Again, um, we're getting into this a part of the year where volume is light. Um, I have one position. That position's uh, still doing well. In fact, it's uh, doing better than it was doing yesterday. So uh, uh, I can be long and still make money in this market. We're going to talk about some of the other ones uh, that uh, kind of fizzled after a pop this morning. We'll look at those stocks. Uh, but as always, uh, you know, we meet uh, at this time every day. And uh, I don't know what else we can say about that. But uh, it's 2 to 3. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating, and on this day, one of the worst industrial disasters in modern history occurs. The Union Carbide Pesticide Plant leaks a lethal cloud of methyl iocyanate gas into the midnight breezes blowing through the residential alleyways of Bhopal, India. In the days and weeks to come, some 3,800 people will die from exposure to the toxic gas. Thousands more will suffer permanent disabilities. Um, I've got a good friend that moved here from the United States uh, some 15 years ago uh, who was born in India and now works for Dell. And uh, I talked to him a great deal about this, not today, but over the, uh, over the years. And I just asked him about what was going on. And uh, you kind of, uh, if you think you're jaundiced about your politics uh, here in the United States, um, boy, just a real eye opener out there as to uh, what happened in uh, and where all that cash went from Union Carbide. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It didn't go to a lot of the families of those 3,800 dead. Uh, and uh, yeah, for the most part, they didn't even care. They were almost uh, some of the people there were kind of overjoyed that uh, maybe there's 3,800 uh, less mouths to feed. We, of course, lose 14 people, and uh, we go bat crazy over that. But uh, kind of interesting to see, and, of course, uh, this went on for a number of years, but I won't go into the gory details. But uh, apparently life is not as precious as it is uh, here in the United States in many places over the world. And, uh, yeah. You were hoping that it was Christmas time. Uh, well, uh, my guess is we've got a couple more weeks of bad news going around. Anyway, uh, going to get into charts fairly uh, early here today. Um, and uh, let's get that going on. Because I uh, saw a lot of interesting moves out here. Again, today is going to be one of those good days in the market in the fact that we had narrowing trading ranges. And those narrowing trading ranges continue to have lighter volume in a lot of stocks. We talked about how many stocks were hitting the highs with no volume, how many stocks were hitting the lows with no volume, and how many stocks uh, that discontinued to go down on light volume uh, as uh, things like uh, crude and other things. So uh, what else can you say out here? And that is um, the first thing, of course, after you look at the dollar index is you want to look at gold. And... I was thinking, you know, if I really thought this market, the wheels were falling off for the long term, um, I'd really think that we'd want to see a big move in gold. Well, just if we just look at the GLD, because it's a little easier to get a handle on, there isn't uh, contracts coming in and out of it. Um, pretty light volume 
on a seven point bounce for this today. Uh, in the GLD, 3.7 million shares. We had 10 million shares to the downside yesterday. And you'd think, well, you look at that dollar and you go, okay, now what? Let's look at crude. Crude, $41.15. And uh, that's up a buck 22. But on any other day, if all this stuff had happened, would you think that up a buck 22 was any kind of signal? Or are you just kind of imparting that on somebody? Um, uh, got a question in the den. Uh, da -da -da -da. What else do we have? <laughs> got a bunch of people IMing me here. I'm reading it as we go along. Uh, Dave, what is the timing of margin calls and mutual fund redemptions? Um, normally, and this is not all the time, but normally, if you're getting a margin call from your broker dealer, uh, they will give you three days to close the position. But uh, it is a kind of more problematic uh, in the fact that mutual fund redemptions uh, come in. Um, from what I can see in trend tabs, that's not a big thing at the moment. My guess is it will be uh, coming next year. But uh, mutual fund redemptions from trim tabs have been rather minor. Uh, the uh, big problems of margin calls right now are not from the retail investor. They are from the big hedge funds and some of the big street names. And um, the ones I heard this morning, I don't trade a lot of UK stocks, but apparently there were a lot of UK firms that were long the dollar short euro and uh, really uh, leveraged up. In fact, probably higher leverage in Forex than just about anything else because they allow it. Um, and uh, that's why you see such big moves. My guess is that it will take, uh, in those markets, uh, they do not give you three days. If you hit a margin call, normally that's it. And that's why you see moves like we saw in the dollar today being down two bucks. Uh, when they start rolling, they just start rolling others and everybody comes back in it. It becomes a rolling auction fairly quickly. And you see such the wild moves uh, that we saw pre-market in the dollar right after Mario Draghi was talking. And, of course, we went to, from that right in to uh, Janet Yellen blabbing. And she didn't say anything that the market liked. So I guess we can even add that in our alternate reality uh, of three things where we can pull them apart and actually see uh, what the market was uh, trying to say as it started to sell down. Was it terrorism? Was it Draghi? Was it Janet Yellen and her uh, interest rates rising? Uh, always tough to pull all those things and tease them out. Anyway, volume continues to be rather tapid for a 26-point move down today. 2.46 billion shares. Maybe it picks up. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger T. TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. 
Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. It's like I took the wrong week to quit drinking. And amen. Anyway, uh, Sears Holding... SHLD, somebody brought this up in the den. Kind of interesting to see it's breaking its August 4th low out here that had 3.1 million shares. It's uh, thoroughly broken it, just 1 million shares so far. But uh, as I said, a great deal of these stocks, or at least some of these stocks uh, that are hitting lows, continue to go lower. Uh, even on lighter volume, normally you get one, two, three days, and then you pop back up. But, um, you know, you just see these things, mostly they're energy stocks and some of these other ones. But uh, kind of interesting to see here, Sears Holding. Of course, it's been on my walking dead list uh, along with uh, BlackBerry and, uh, uh, well, we lost Radio Shack this year. Huh. Although I think it's still alive. I saw some article about it last night, like uh, someone's bought the name or something. I don't know what they're going to do with it, but... Uh, uh, we've got a whole bunch of other walking dead stocks. And just eventually, the problem is that these uh, stocks have so many people, so short these things. I, last time I looked, shares holding was like 70% short. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, then it takes, if everybody knows that it's going uh, to hell in, a, hell in a handbasket, this looks like it is one of these things that takes forever. Kind of like the uh, proverbial pot. Uh, that's being watched. Uh, water never boils. But interesting nonetheless. Uh, other uh, indexes and stocks that have caught my eye today, the IBB, um, you know, this thing, it, it really didn't test the previous high on that light of volume, although it did start retracing on the 30th. But, uh, you know, it tested the previous high of November 3rd with 2.1 million shares with 1.9 million shares. So, not all that bad, but, uh, you know, even the thrust up on the 18th of November, it's on 2.6 million shares. So you kind of got into those candles with some decent volume. 
Um, a lot more market conditions and rare events, I think, than a lot of people would give it credit for in the market. Uh, other stocks of interest, uh, I said that uh, a lot of weakness would come out of China again, and we're starting to see this with Wynn Resorts. Uh, there was a lot of happy talk earlier uh, in the uh, previous weeks about Wynn Resorts uh, coming back. Of course, those were all dashed uh, today with actual news. Uh, no video from YouTube being blamed. Uh, this down, uh, but the volume very light, uh, but off fairly significantly, off uh, 6% today. Uh, and uh, But again, this is what I'm saying. I'm not, I, it's hard for me to see a lot of downside in this market. If we can go down 6% and have such light volume in stocks like when. Uh, I think that there's a lot of downside to these. I just suspect it's after the first of the year. Uh, some of the other stocks that I thought were very interesting, uh, one that I was considering and playing and did not uh, was uh, Solar City. We've been talking about the theme that some of these stocks are just too short to go down. And uh, one of the, you know, one of these things are, uh, you know, it did exactly what it should have done, which is pretty much fill this gap down that happened on the 30th. I thought I was looking at it, I think, on the 30th or the 29th, and the thing moved before I had a chance. I thought I had maybe a couple of more days before I wanted to buy a uh, call on it, but I thought, you know, maybe the 30 calls back in here. And I was kind of thinking about it. Looked at them, they were kind of expensive. I thought maybe in a couple of days they'll pull back a little bit more. So I got a little greedy, um, but uh, I thought this thing would probably come here and fill this gap. Uh, well, it certainly did today, but on rather light volume compared to that light volume down day of the 30th of October. Um, that was, what, uh, 26.4 million shares. Uh, anyway, the uh, nice pop gave most of it back out here today. Um, what I would love to see if uh, on a longer term scale, um, I'm like I said, if anybody's listening to the show any uh bit. They know that I'm thinking this is uh, one of these stocks in the next year or two is going to be bankrupt. Um, and when we look at this, it uh, certainly is coming back down to this high volume down day. Uh, but I think it's just setting up an ABC down. Unfortunately, a lot of times people just think, hey, these things instantly go to the C point and then they fail. Uh, but I have a feeling that we could have a lot of these stocks that are just so highly short uh, continue to drift up uh, on lighter volume, really setting themselves up for uh, a short, maybe at the beginning of the year. Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. Looking through my email and everything else. Uh, we'll get to it. I got a couple of questions in the email. If you'd like, you can call me at 877-927-6648. You can email me at uh, path at tfnn.com. And of course, uh, post a message in the day. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, 
Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's nadex.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's true. Life is all about choices. At EverBank, they're making it easy for you to make a smart one with this special cash offer. Open a new yield pledge money market account with funds from another financial institution or deposit new funds into an existing yield pledge money market account and you could earn up to a $500 cash reward. And if you're opening a new account, you'll also get their new higher six month bonus interest rate along with their yield pledge promise that ensures your yield will always be in the top 5% of competitive accounts at banks nationwide. Open a new account or add to one, it's your choice. To qualify, you must meet balance and other limited time offer requirements. Go to everbank.com forward slash TFNN for details and deposit options or speak with one of their banking specialists at 1-855-750-4051 for more information. You must act by December 31st, 2015 to be eligible. Everbank is a member FDIC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, Dan in uh, Clearwater says, so you walked through the uh, Sears store in Clearwater on Black Friday and it was empty which is okay because they announced they could not ring up any transactions, including cash. Uh, good thing they were empty, Dan said from Clearwater. Um, yeah, I've been in that one and another one. What's the other one I go to? Oh, the one uh, over uh, in uh, Citrus Point or Citrus Park. And uh, uh, it's still better than the one over there in Clearwater, which is kind of creepy. You walk into those stores and all the uh, suspended ceilings have turned yellow and the uh, fluorescent bulbs have turned all the plastic underneath them. Uh, a crazy kind of yellow with the bugs that are kind of dead sitting there. And then you look at the linoleum floor and you go, that's uh, like 1970s. Uh, man, they haven't updated these stores in a while. But yeah, uh, Sears Holdings, I'm going to be surprised. They're probably got a 50-50 chance of making it the next year. Two years, I suspect, uh, it is 10%. Uh, but uh, eh, what can you say? Uh, Skyworks Solution uh, was interested to see this one test early out in the morning. It's previous high. November 6th, it had 7.1 million shares at uh, $86.62. Uh, 2.8 million shares today. So it did pierce it right back in. Uh, kind of the proverbial prairie dog, which it just stuck its head out, look around, going back for two more months of winter. Uh, but, uh, eh, what can you say? Um, a lot of rare events coming out here. Uh, some of these other stocks, of course, we had Avago, uh, which is still up. Uh, had very good interest, uh, uh, very good uh, uh, earnings 
And uh, they're basically saying we found for some more customers other than Apple. And that's probably why Apple hmm, was kind of weak uh, going into this morning. Uh, we'll look at it again here in a second. Where's that at? Eh, it's off a buck 82. Eh, it, I, just uh, 27 million shares on it. Not a whole lot of energy on the way down on that either. Although it's been weaker than I thought it would be. Anyway, Avago looks like it's going to try to make up to its uh, June 1st high at 150 bucks and 50 cents. That had 11 million shares. We already got 9 million shares today. So I think we probably can put another 3 bucks on that. Uh, a lot of people were short this uh, based on what Apple was doing. And uh, you got just the opposite out here. They say that they got more and better customers coming around. Uh, P Lab. P L A B. Another one out here that was moving. Uh, not a whole lot um, comparatively, but... Uh, Percentage-wise, some fairly decent. Gave a you know, great deal of it back out here, but Photonics had uh, numbers out and a uh, nice little pop out here. Uh, of course, it opened a lot higher, and again, as the day is drug out, kind of faded out on a lot of these. I'll look at some of the ones that I've been looking at for my tests. Uh, but uh, feel free to give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, post messages on the den. On the den? In the den. I don't want to be one of those people say, uh, have you been over there on the Facebook or on the Twitter? If they put an article before it, the, I always laughed at Everybody on the street calls it the Goldman Sachs. I never understood that either. Or the softwares. Softwares are not plural. It's software. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I bug people with all my misspellings, so hopefully uh, they'll let that go. Presence on the tree. Hmm. I haven't heard that one. Uh, Legion of Public Limited, A-L-L-E. Don't know a lot about this company, but uh, certainly it tested its previous high on lighter volume. Let's uh, take a quick look at its profile and learn more on this day of darkness. Uh, manufactures and sells mechanical and electronic security products, uh, provides locks, lock set, and key systems. I uh, wonder how much the call there's going to be for that when all of them are part of the Internet of Everything. Uh, video analytics, doors, doors, frames, and other accessories. Huh. Okay, well, not doing so hot. Down, but again, as I said, there's not a lot of volume at these highs in a lot of these companies that have come out here and kissed these highs. October 29th, uh, $67.50 with 1.8 million shares. We had 1.3 million shares a couple of days ago. Did go above it. It's closed now, definitely below that high. Uh, but today, you should probably be seeing, especially on a horrible day like this, you probably should see some volume coming in. Uh, 243,000 shares so far. Um, that is the real problem out here. You see, you need some, especially on a day like today, you need some price acceleration. And we're down to pretty much where support should be. Uh, if I ask 100 uh, technical analysis people, I bet the number that they uh, come up for support uh, from them is a 2045 on the S&P cash. And we've already just hit that uh, just moments ago. So the question is going to be whether or not those people in technical analysis are willing to uh, put their money where their mouth is and uh, pick this up. Uh, but again, I would have liked to have seen just a lot more volume out here on the downside, 2.67 uh, billion shares. So is it better than other days? Yeah, but uh, we're talking about maybe a couple hundred million shares. This is not some kind of defining uh, market. I also, especially with the market moving down, would love to have seen uh, a lot bigger move in gold and in crude. Up a buck on crude, up um, eight bucks in gold. Uh, just doesn't tell me that this dollar move is real yet. I would have liked to have seen some kind of inner uh, species communications between uh, the dollar and some commodities uh, to get this stuff going, other than the fact that maybe we just had a lot of people on the wrong side of the trade. DHI, of course, a lot of these uh, uh, earnings are coming out in the next few days for um, the housing stocks. Um, I didn't look at the headlines for this today. 
Uh, anything out there? No. And on a Thursday, doesn't say housing. Was it today? Just says the numbers were out. Don't see it. Anyway, um, we've been talking about housing, and of course, the housing's been one of these sectors that's, that's done nothing but hung up at the highs on D.H. Horton, August 19th, 12 million shares at 32.37, pierced it with 8.3 million shares, right back into the trading range yet again, on, um, eh, went to 33.06 that day. We've gotten back into it over the last week with uh, 4.6 to 1, 4.5 million shares, 4.6 million shares. Uh, down yesterday on 3.1 million shares. Would have liked to have seen 4 or 5 million shares today. Um, it's not a bullish-looking chart, but what it isn't is a chart that has a lot of follow-through today. Uh, 2 million shares is not uh, telling me that uh, people are racing to the exits. Although they're racing to the exits. Uh, 2044 on the S&P cash. And we're just ticking 2.7 billion shares on the New York Stock Exchange tape. Uh, eBay out here. Um, I've uh, thought that eBay, um, of course, minus its PayPal unit. Um, kind of interesting to see uh, my guess is this is another company that's probably shortly going out of business uh, without a major change in what it does. Um, I think that it's probably going to just reach a tipping point. Um, maybe five years ago, they went and changed the way that uh, their uh, vendors had to pay them. And since then, it's been a slow and gradual decline. Of course, the only reason eBay is still around is uh, they bought PayPal. And uh, kind of like uh, YouTube, or not YouTube, but uh, um, Yahoo buying Alibaba uh, or having a stake in it. A lot of these uh, companies are only in it because something else that they bought are still doing well. Uh, but down, and again, this is another one out here that you would like to see by at least today at uh, 243. A lot more volume back in this one. Now, can it drift back down to 25 bucks? It can. But... Um, if I was really buying in to a uh, issue out here, uh, I'd like to see, you know, that we're, we had a lot more of these that have topped out and are coming down today on lighter volume. Got another question from Dan in Clearwater. I own some put options on uh, the IBB. I sold half today for 77% gain. Looks like it go lower, which is why I didn't sell the other half. I'm uh, thinking it uh, retest the 11-12 uh, low. Where does it go from here? Well, certainly not a lot of volume again in this. So I'm going to look at it. Now, in fact, I'll talk about it tomorrow on the show. But um, my guess is that when I look at my numbers now that I get daily for shorts, um, you know, there's not a lot of volume already. Um, normally, what you want to look for is when everybody else gets short. And that sometimes is a lot of volume is kind of the... Uh, what they sell, say is a selling climax. A lot of times it's just everybody that thinks it's going to zero climbs on board. And, of course, instantly the next day they are squeezed out of that position. Um, I don't see that. The volume's been light yesterday. Volume's kind of light today. Um, I think you'd probably want to see this thing around the 305 uh, low from November 12th. I think that's probably what you would look for that if this thing keeps going. But with all the light volume... Um, I think uh, thinking uh, that you did the right thing, taking half, I don't know how many you have on it, but, uh, you know, this is one that could bounce right back tomorrow unless we start getting a lot more volume by the end of the day. Uh, let's see what else uh, we have out here. We're talking about stocks that discontinue lower, even on lighter volume. Uh, Goler LNG Limited is a transportation company for natural gas, and this is kind of what we've seen Volume did pick up finally yesterday, but nowhere close to the previous lows. Um, I'm looking at the September 28th low on this, 25.52. And uh, this thing kind of cracked through it yesterday, but only 2.8 million shares today. We've got 1 million shares. So a lot of this looks to me kind of like an end-of-the-year washout in some of these. But again, they keep moving down, and there's not a lot of buyers out here 
uh, jumping into these at the end of the day. So here we are at uh, 2045, which is where everybody thought that the market was going to go on the downside uh, for those bearish technical analysis folks. Uh, but again, 2.3 and 2.73 billion shares. And man, I would like to see to really get an idea that we've got a lot of downside to continue through the rest of the um, year, even the next couple of weeks. I probably would have liked to seen 4.2 to 4.5 billion shares today. Right now, I think we're only going to get up to about 3.7, maybe 3.8 billion shares by the end of the day. So I think we're going to be about 20, maybe 25 percent short on a good indication. Doesn't mean that we won't have stocks and or the whole market act like uh, goal or limited, and that is just continue down on light volume. Uh, and just can't catch a bid or a thrill. But uh, we'll continue on. Um, what else do we have? Oh, we talked about the SMHs giving a pretty clear signal yesterday uh, of a high. And, of course, that's going into the October 23rd high, $56.36, 5 5.2 million shares. Of course, we went into that with 1.8 million shares. And today... Uh, they spiked it higher at the open, but even now we just have 2 million shares. So not a lot of interest to either buy or sell uh, at least this index back up here. Uh, the energy wasn't a whole lot different than the energy down from that October th 23rd high. So I'm not uh, rapidly wanting to hop on these stocks for the shorts. There are a handful of these uh, stocks and a couple, actually a couple of Gartley patterns that have shown up and... Um, I'm going to give it a couple of days and see what's going on here. But uh, we'll continue to take a look at it. Uh, we talked about the TWM yesterday getting off the bottom. Uh, this was one that actually did go out and test its low on lighter volume, uh, but not that much lighter, uh, about 25%. Pretty good for an ETF. Uh, and we had a little bit of move up on the 30th, um, flat on the 1st. Yesterday, no volume, but we moved up on 1 million shares. Uh, even a bigger move up today, but uh, in fact, double or almost triple the move or the candle, but just 1.2 million shares on it. So it's very tough uh, to see a lot of um, action other than maybe some range bound action in many of these ETFs and stocks. And I think we went up to the top, had no volume. We're moving down and we certainly are going to need some volume. Doesn't mean we won't get it in the last 30 minutes of the day, but uh, if we do not, then I think maybe we're set up for a kind of nice expiration. Of course, we get into that expiration cycle next Wednesday. Uh, anyway, VMware, uh, this one has not tested its high volume low of October 21st. It did start to fill a, a lot of this uh, gap. And uh, to pull the trigger, I probably want it to get up to 65 to 66, which I think... Uh, even with this a downtrend we have now, is possible before the end of the year. In fact, uh, this 2045 may end up holding here today, and that may be the last hurrah for those clawed individuals that clawed down. Claw down. And of course, a bull market is one that goes up because they get horns and they go up. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. 
Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we've got a little bit going on out here. Let's take a look at Microsoft and uh, Apple. I just wanted to see what was going on in this. I mean, Microsoft, since its uh, er uh, earnings announcement, has been drifting a little higher. Of course, we've got a lot of anecdotal reports of big lines at their stores. I went over the International Mall uh, here in Tampa over the weekend. And, you know, the crowds were pretty good uh, for, uh, it's a little kiosk kind of thing, but uh, they they built a new store. But uh, volume pretty good. Um, but it is, you know, down. But again, you'd like to see, if you think the entire market's rolling over, I'd like to see a lot of more volume down here in Microsoft. Uh, I'm no uh, rabid bull. I just think that maybe this uh, upside continues through the end of the year. Uh, anyway, 24 million shares today. You know, you were up on 47 million shares yesterday. Um, it wouldn't be anything if this thing came back to 51 or 5150. Uh, just coming back and filling this gap that came it came up on, on 135 million shares back on the 23rd of October. Uh, more interesting to me, of course, is the weakness in Apple. I thought this thing was probably going to go to about 122 or 123. Didn't think there was a lot of upside. In fact, we had a caller, and I said, I didn't understand the upside bet on uh, this, and I didn't understand really a downside bet on this. Um, not uh, We've had, what, now three days of declining volume as it went down. Today, the volume is not really increasing uh, on it very much. It is moving down. 
But uh, as I said, I'd like to have seen some kind of, within kind of three days, I'd like to see a whole lot more volume, a sign of weakness. And you know, what we have is kind of a trading range where we don't have any volume as we go up. And as we go down, uh, have even a little bit less. And that generally sets up kind of a flat market into the end of the year. But uh, don't see a great deal on that. Uh, what else do we have out here? I wanted to look at um, da -da 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 -da. T T E K Tetra Tech. Yeah, it's just bouncing around. Let's look at some of the others. I haven't done a lot of big stocks lately. Uh, Intel was another one out here. Um, it tested its previous volume fairly close to the volume before also. Uh, the May 29th high, uh, this uh, came up with 43 million shares. We get into the October 23rd high, 42 million shares. Yesterday, 41 million shares. Now, it's kind of bouncing through this big day down that happened on the 27th of January this year. It's f uh, 58 million shares. So really, we've kind of been bouncing against that. But again, I would have liked to have seen at least 41 million shares here today. Maybe we're going to get that. But it's not like uh, the volume is steaming in. Uh, you know, just 18 million shares right now, it's hard for me to actually see it. Now, again, we've got a lot of divergence, which is uh, some at least okay or fairly decent volume, uh, but not great volume in the indexes. Uh, but when we go out here and look at a great deal of these stocks, uh, the volume is not anything that you want to write home about on the downside yet. So maybe it's going to take some more downside to shake some folks out, or maybe we're burning out of these lows right here, getting a little bounce off that uh, 24, uh, uh, 2045 level on the S&P cash. And as I said, that's probably where the standard uh, tech uh, guy is probably going to say uh, on his trading floor up there in Wall Street. And if you were going to buy anything, you needed to wait for it to pull back to 2045. The question is whether or not that's going to hold or go higher. I'm betting that this all kind of just fizzles out throughout the end of the year, but we'll see. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Hang on for Tom O'Brien and Andy Heck. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.